Hello everyone, Peter Cook here, Programs Director at the North Berrien Historical Museum in Coloma. I'm here today to talk to you about the voyageurs and the French fur trade. We'll start by talking about the French fur trade and then we'll get into this lively bunch known as the voyageurs. So the French fur trade was an important industry in the Great Lakes region long before Michigan officially became a state. Going back to the 16th and 17th century, the French explorers who first came to the New World and started establishing settlements began to focus more and more on the fur-bearing animals that they found in the New World. They formed alliances with the indigenous nations in the area, and these indigenous people are the original inhabitants of the region. Another word for indigenous is native, hence why indigenous peoples in the United States are sometimes referred to as Native Americans. And the indigenous people had the skills to hunt and trap these animals, these fur-bearing animals, as well as prepare the fur. I have a few examples of the type of furs that they might have traded with the French. And this is a muskrat. This is uh, one of the, as you can see, there's a tag on this. Uh, that is because I did not hunt or trap these myself. I ordered them from a fur company. And I kept the tags on so kids looking at these in classrooms will know what animal it is they're looking at. Sometimes they ask me, Mr. Cook, why did you kill these animals? It wasn't me, but these are real furs. I also have a red fox handy. Look at that. Red fox. Very cool. I also have a sea otter, Canadian otter. And that's got a very sleek fur to it. Uh, just a few of the many different types of furs that the indigenous peoples would have trapped or hunted and traded with the French. This was done at trading posts and forts set up throughout Michigan. Uh, Sault Ste. Marie up in the Upper Peninsula was the first European settlement in Michigan and there was a trading post there. Of course there was one at Mackinac as well. Detroit had a fort where trading was done and much closer to southwest Michigan there was Fort Miami and Fort St. Joseph. Now the most highly sought after fur was the beaver fur and they were very popular in Europe at the time. I have one of those handy as well, a beaver pelt. The beaver's thick, lustrous fur is great for making garments, and its hair can be felted into hats. The popular, well-known top hat is just one of those. The fur was essentially bling of the time period, especially in Europe. It was a status symbol, a sign of wealth. And the Beaver had, in Europe in the 1600s had essentially been hunted to near extinction. And when people started arriving in the New World, Europeans began arriving in the New World, there were over 10 million beaver to be found. And once again, they hunted them almost to extinction. The only thing that saved the beaver was a change in fashion, a change in style, when silk hats came into fashion. So thankfully the beaver did not become extinct. It was French merchants and people working in European hat shops who wanted these furs. And uh, the fur trade be became the main eco economic tie between North America and Europe. And through this emerged a new pro profession for French Canadian men. That was that of the voyageur. Voyageur is a French word which translates to traveler. They were usually men in their early 20s to their early 60s, and they were hired by fur companies to transport goods between remote stations. They traveled the waterways in birch bark canoes, a skill craft they learned from the Native Americans, the indigenous peoples, the Potawatomi, being one of those practitioners of the birch bark canoe. A lot of other canoes were made of hollowed out logs, 
birch bark canoes were much lighter. So when the voyageurs had to portage, meaning they would be on the water and there would be rapids and waterfalls that made traversing the water dangerous, they could carry their canoes, all the furs and the supplies over the land very easily because the canoes were very lightweight. So that was an advantage to the birch bark canoe. The voyageurs had to keep themselves entertained. They're out rowing 18 hours a day, months at a time. Sometimes they're away from home for years. And so they had to know, the average voyageur knew 50 rowing songs. They would tell jokes. One of the jokes that I've been told from a voyageur reenactor, uh, we mentioned portaging. Of course, they're French, they pronounced it portage. And it's, uh, why does a voyageur portage? To get to the other side. Pretty hammy. I like it though. Uh, they also would tell exaggerated tales, ghost stories. Uh, there are stories of ghost canoes around the campfire at night. So they, they are, as I mentioned, they were a lively bunch. They kept themselves entertained while out and about. Now this right here, when they would arrive at the trading posts, they'd park their canoe. And they would have to, uh, this is a fur pack, and they weighed about 90 pounds a piece. They would have like, hundreds of furs inside of them. And so they would have to walk these from the water to the trading post, which was sometimes a half a mile away from the water, it's probably a 10 minute walk. And usually they would have to make three trips a piece each voyage year. And your average voyage year was going to carry at least two of these 90 pound packs, so that's 180 pounds. And so this is the fur pack, and the rope and the strap are the tump line. And the way that they would carry these is quite literally using their head. So, yeah, it's a 180 pounds that they would have strapped to their skull, and three trips back and forth walk in the furs, and uh, I'm told some voyageurs could carry up to six packs. That's a lot of weight. Those might be some tall tails right there, but they were beasts for sure, undoubtedly. And that's really, that's about all I have for today. Just a quick lesson. I utilized the conference of our voyageur in the French fur trade traveling trunk to talk to you about this subject. I, those go out, those are available for free through the museum. So, contact us about those if you like. Thank you for spending a little time with us today. Once again, I'm Peter Cook with the North Berrien Historical Museum in Coloma. Have a wonderful day. We'll see ya.